Welcome. My name is Katie Paris. I'm the founder of Red Wine and Blue. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time tonight, we are a growing community, have only been around a few years, but there are hundreds of thousands of women who are here with us now. And we are here together because we are all dedicated to standing up and fighting the right-wing extremism that we see throughout our communities, throughout our country, we know that we can do so much better. So we use digital organizing, we use friend-to-friend -friend organizing in order to stand up for ourselves, for our kids and for our communities. And we're just so glad that you're here tonight. We are all here tonight because we recognize the stakes in this election. We see the consequences of the fall of Roe everywhere. Here in my state of Ohio, there have been stories, not just of one young, young rape victim having to leave the state to get an abortion. There have been stories of cancer patients who cannot get the care they need, people who cannot get the medications they need, care delayed, care delayed. We also see the consequences of school board extremism, attacks on our democracy across the board. And the truth is, extremism is exhausting. I recognize maybe I'm not supposed to say that on an event like this. You know, we could, I, I, the temptation can be, okay, Katie, you know, keep up, rah, rah, rah. But I believe that doing the work that is actually necessary to beating extremism requires that we all are very real with each other, that we can be honest with each other, that we can be vulnerable with each other. See, here's the thing. When we share how we're actually feeling and we don't just try to do like what society tells us, like put on a happy face and pretend everything's fine. We create connection among one another. And that is where we get our resiliency. Um, that is where I believe that we also find our courage. So I believe that supporting each other, coming together in this community is how we do actually, in fact, beat extremism. They can only wear us out if we go it alone. In isolation, we falter. In community, we thrive. Heather Cox Richardson was here with us recently and she said, you are only ineffectual and alone if you stay ineffectual and alone. So I'm asking all of you tonight to support each other as we do something big together. As a community, we're going to reach out to the people in our own individual communities and there's a ton of power in that. When you all think about that there are hundreds and hundreds of you on here tonight and that there are thousands and thousands of people in this red, white, and blue community and our networks emanating out from there. How does it make you feel to think about our collective power if we're actually supporting each other, if we're showing up for each other and we're willing to dig deep and be vulnerable and be courageous and have the conversations and reach out? It makes you feel badass. Yes, Piper. You are so in the right place, Piper. Powerful, empowered. Yes. That is why we're here tonight because we are pissed and we are exhausted and we are disgusted, but we're not just gonna take those feelings and leave them stuck inside. We're gonna reach out, we're gonna be honest with each other and we're gonna be fearless. And this is what is gonna position us to be there for each other so that we can rally other people, that we can rally our squads, our friends to get out to vote because we're not gonna let them take away our rights. That's right, Tiffany. So we're not just gonna say we're gonna do something tonight, we are going to actually do it. So I'm gonna throw up before we have our special guests come on with me, we're gonna put a slide up on the screen. This is how we're gonna do the thing together tonight. You can go to rwb, red, wine, blue, rwbvotes.com, or you can text trouble, because you know we like to cause some good trouble around here, to 59868. You can text trouble to 59868. Now, I know you might have one window open on your phone, minimize me, make me small on your phone or on your laptop or whatever device you might be on and do that right now because I want you to have the chance to fully participate in this event today. Abby and Piper are gonna be reaching out to their friends. We're all going to be thinking about who are the people in our network that we need to contact about voting, okay? And if you need to figure out how to have some of those conversations, we're gonna talk about that. If you're thinking, oh, everyone I know votes, we're gonna think about that too and think about do they have all the resources that they need to vote all the way down the
the ticket and to get everyone that they know voting too. And be a part of this, be a part of this fully with us tonight. Give us your presence, be present with us and be a part of a supportive community. Okay, with that, oh my goodness, it is my distinct pleasure to get to bring on two very strong fine women tonight. So I wanna introduce Abby Jacobson and Piper Parabo. Hi, you guys. Okay, Hi. so Abby Jacobson, um, Broad City, you all might know her from Broad City. You might know her from A League of Their Own, the TV show on Amazon Prime. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's just so good. And if you wanna have all the feelings about like, friendship and supporting each other. It is like, I can't recommend a better thing. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. And then Piper, who many, many people of course recognize like from your breakout starring role in Coyote Ugly. Um, I think people will always recognize you from that Piper, but I know many of us are loving watching you on the latest episodes of Yellowstone and are looking forward to much more to come this season. Um, so thank you both for being here tonight. You know, there are a lot of people who are in the public eye who make a different choice. And you guys have made the choice to become involved and to use your voice. I'm so excited to be here. I can't believe how many women are here and how from so many different places. Like that opening was incredible watching all the states and cities come up. I loved it. No, I felt yeah. the same way. This chat is like on fire. <laughs> it's like, okay, here we go. Like, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like this is such a positive space and we've been here for five minutes and I'm just I'm very I feel very excited to be here tonight. Something that we really like to name about the red wine and blue community is that some women are veterans of political engagement they have been around the block with this but many more are getting involved for the first time and so we love to share stories about how you first got involved and I just love to hear that I don't know your origin stories you know were you volunteering as a kid at a young age did it just happen for you in the last couple of years did some things spur you to action I was not volunteering as a kid um I I wish I was I guess no, that was know, just I, me I guess that was no just that's me. incredible <laughs> um I think that I feel like uh, I hope that's happening more now but it's really hard for me to to think to even think about my engagement in politics before um, 2016, th that election, because that election was just like so overpowering in a way where I'm like that, I, that is it, without a doubt, like, I think I was engaged, uh, probably in the beginning when I, when I went to college more than I had ever been, but the, for the 2016 election, I was more engaged than ever. And it was sort of the first time that I had a platform and just becoming way more, um, informed and felt like it was sort of the first time that me and my friends were talking about it more and um, just feeling really, I think all that stuff that we're still feeling in the chat, um, I think really began in a huge way for me during that election and hasn't really stopped. I don't know if that answers it, but yeah. Yeah, I, I 100%. I think you're, if, yeah. If, you, if you can see the chat, you're seeing woman after woman say, 2016 was it for me, you yeah. know, and that, you know, I, and there's, there's been other women who've become engaged for other reasons that are, you know, hit near and dear to their hearts because of things happening locally. Roe v. Wade being overturned, of course, has been an all whole new wake up call and call to action. Um, but yeah, I think that you'll find again and again, that's so true. You, you're being very relatable at the moment in terms of your experience for 2016. What about you, Piper? Did anything, was 2016 a, a shifting moment for you? A friend of mine's birthday was the same night as election night. And in 2016, you know, we thought we were going to get the first woman president. And so we're like, let's have a party. And like, we, I brought champagne and like, I was all dressed up and like halfway through the party, people were like, I'm going to go home. And like, we'll just put the champagne in the refrigerator. And like, it was the most depressing party. And I woke up the next morning crying. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know who to get mad at. I don't know how to take action. I didn't have a community that I that I regularly interacted with. So it took a lot of kind of learning and reaching out and asking people to try and figure out like, if you're pissed off, what are you supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And so I've kind of like been figuring that out ever since. So what has, um, what has, what has helped you kind of figure that out? Like what have, have there been sort of touchstone moments where you have figured out like, 
oh, this works about using my voice? What have, what has, um, what has guided you in terms of finding your voice? Because I think both of you are known as, you know, women with, with platforms who are willing to use them for, to fight for your values. I mean, I think for me, I, I, which is why I'm so excited about this organization. I'm sorry, I didn't know about this organization before this event. So I feel very honored, but I, I, I think for me, I, it, I think a big part of like, why I think this is so important is like, uh, uh, it's like speaking about politics um, in general can be very scary. And I think I worry about, okay, I know, I know what, some stuff, but I don't know everything. And I think once I started using my platform, it's like, it's kind of always, I always angle it about like, I don't know, like I'm not the one that knows. I'm like trying to learn like everyone else. And like, I found out this thing. This is, I'm going to post about this thing I just found out about. And I'm, I'm not, I'm never going to be an expert. And so I'm just learning the same as everybody on here. And I think everything, um, you know, everything affects us all so much, whether it's directly affecting our community or not, it really affects us. And so I think like it's the sharing of that information and the being okay with not knowing it all. And that, I, I don't know, that's really important for me because it's very scary to even post something because you're like, wait, 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 do I know like the, the like it, it, all of the details? But I think that's for me using the platform is sort of like one bit at a time. The idea that anybody knows everything is insane. I mean, the yeah. only people who act like there's that like mediocre white male sort of confidence, right? That is this notion of like projecting like, yes, I know everything, but literally no one can know everything. But what we can be is experts on our own lives and perspectives, experts on our own friendships. And that has tremendous, tremendous value. So I think that, you know, we've all just like got to get over this notion of I have to know every fact or every statistic, because guess what? That's never what changes a mind anyway. It's you being open about how you actually feel about things and showing up for your people in your life. So um, thank you for saying that and naming that because so many women do feel that way. And we've got to get over it because like society conditions us to quiet us. Um, and yeah. we cannot be quiet. I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I think I, I really feel like showing up is how I learn. You know, you don't have to be an expert to show up, like showing up to this tonight, or you see that there's going to be a meeting about an issue in your community. You don't, you're not going to headline the meeting, just go. Like for me, just li showing up in person or showing up on Zooms like this, it's like, this is how I learn. And also this is how I see who I like in leadership with so many issues that I follow. I started to see the same people speaking, the same people coming forward. And then I would go read their book or read their op-ed. And so, and, and I realized that those were the leaders who I could count on because they were the ones who were showing up in person again, again, again. So first I just showed up to learn myself. And then the more I showed up, the more I learned about, you know, the larger issue. And everybody's happy when you show up. You go to a meeting in your town or a march or a rally or a protest, nobody's like, get out of here. They're like, oh my God, thank you so much for coming. So you're always welcomed and you just can be the person like sitting there listening if you're nervous. There's like such a positive feedback loop, right? Like of getting involved. It is true. It's like a, it's like a warm hug. People want, they want more people because they know it takes all of us. There is strength in numbers. So just showing up is so, so huge. So, you know, I mean, and, and also this is what we always say too, like if you're feeling nervous about posting something on social media, about having a conversation with someone you haven't talked about politics before, chances are you're gonna get pretty good feedback. Chances are they're gonna say, thank you. And we always wanna get over that first hurdle and let someone have that good feedback experience because then it's like, oh, that felt good. Let's do this some more, you know? I'm gonna try, I wonder if that happened with you guys too, of like, okay, maybe I'm going to step out, take a little risk, use my platform. And then it's like, people respect you for that, you know? And so thank you for continuing to show up. Um, Piper, um, your role on Yellowstone is an environmental protester, as I understand it, if I'm reading the internet correctly, um, was actually inspired like by you and your own lived experience. I think like of getting arrested for yeah. being in a protest. So do tell. That's such a nice question. Thank you. Um, 
I had when um, during the Trump administration, when uh, Jeff Sessions, who was attorney general, was going to repeal a law um, that kept kids who came to America um, when they came illegally, but they were minors. So like they, they weren't the ones who came in here. They just like went with their family. He was going to repeal this law, um, which was going to like wreck the lives of all these kids. And so I went to a, I heard there was going to be a training on how to get arrested. And I was like, that sounds interesting and dramatic. But so, so I went and then I was like, oh, that's too scary. So I just like learned, but I didn't get arrested. But then years later, when um, Kavanaugh was nominated to the Supreme Court and I knew his feelings about women's reproductive rights, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get arrested. I just, I had that tool in my toolbox from years earlier. Civil disobedience is not the first thing you, you know, there's like a lot of things you can do before you go for civil disobedience, peaceful civil disobedience. But with Kavanaugh, it was happening really fast and I knew other women who were gonna protest and so I flew to DC and like stood up in the Senate Judiciary hearing while Chuck Grassley was speaking, especially because I don't like Chuck Grassley, and um, and protested the nomination of Kavanaugh and was arrested. And then I was um, drinking wine with um, this guy who writes Yellowstone and his wife. And I told that story and he was like, wait, what? And he was like, can I write that? I was like, sure, sure, bro. Like, yeah. And it was really cool because also he and I don't agree on every issue. And so this kind of dramatic thing was something that interested him. And it was kind of a way to begin working together, even though we don't see eye to eye on every single thing. I love that. Um, Abby, I want to talk about how the fact that something I love about your projects is that you tackle hard topics, but they leave us feeling better. How do you do that? It seems like the common theme is friendship and the source of friendship as um, the power. Is there something, is it, has friendship always played a really powerful role in your life? I would just love to hear you talk about that because clearly you are choosing to work on projects that, I don't know, that's the theme I, I'm getting from them anyway. I mean, I think that friendships um, are like equivalent to love stories in a way. And that's sort of how I think about them in at least the two shows that I've, I've worked on. Um, so I always kind of think about them that way. And I guess um, kind of similar, Piper, to what you're talking about. It, it just made me think about that. It's like, even with the friendships that I, I mean, I think that I'm primarily tend to focus on friendships that have like a history and they're like, they're going through sort of like a fracturous time or something's changing, but like there's like an undeniable dynamic and chemistry there, which doesn't totally sound like what you're talking about with the this creator or writer, but there's also usually like a big difference because inevitably, I think as we all experience, like we love our friends and we have so much in common. And then there's also like big things that are, are very big differences. And mm -hmm. whether that's just like sort of like, uh, you know, in league, um, you know, whether that's like who you love or uh, like, I, I don't need to pull examples from fun shows, but just there's always going to be differences. And I think it's the the most, one of the most interesting part parts of being alive and going through those relationships is getting through those differences and, mm -hmm. and the, how the love, you know, that had that fun chemistry can get through those more difficult moments. And I don't know, I guess I'm just really fascinated by, by that and, and that sort of part of life. And I kind of can find sort of endless, endless things, especially female friendships. And half of it is just applicable to this is just conversations. Well, I think Abby, you're going to find that you are very good at relational organizing because it's all about the friendship. It's all about finding that common ground, that point of commonality in order to have the conversations. So we're going to get to that. Um, right now, I want to bring up the Julies. Those who have been with Red, Wine and Blue for any amount of time know all about the Julies. They run our national organizing program and they are going to get you all on to rally your friends to vote by using, if you go to rwbvotes.com and they're gonna walk you through it right now. So Piper, Abby, everybody else, get out your phone 
And you're yeah. going to get on the tool so that you can start matching your friends to the voter file, having access to all kinds of cool tools. So here we go. Julie, you're up. All right. Well, Julie and I live in Ohio, you guys. So in case you haven't heard about our state, um, we have a six week abortion ban. And recently, legislature legislators, kind of extreme legislators, stood on this capital steps and announced that they were going to do a full abortion ban and they were also mulling banning contraception. Um, so I have been having lots of conversations with my friends who are not 100% dialed into politics in Ohio. It's really, really important. Absolutely. And I have been as well, because also two people don't always believe that that's really truly happening. But talking to our friends and family is one of the most important and effective things that you can do this election to really make an impact and defeat extremism. And it has a name. It's called relational organizing. And it's more effective for you all to be talking to your friends and family than when strangers do it. And the reason why is because they trust you, they believe you, and you know what's important to them. Red, wine, and blue is going to step up. We are trying to reach every suburban voter we can in our target states of Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, and North Carolina. But we really need your help. And that's why you have your phone out and you are about to get into rally with us. Just like Julie explained, you guys have a huge impact on your friends. So you can help us reach everybody. What you can do is you can claim 10 friends or maybe 20 or 30. You got a lot of people in your networks, I bet. And you can say, hey, Red, Wine, and Blue, I got these people. You don't have to worry about them. I got them. And we are going to make this really easy for you. So we have a way for you to go claim your voters. You can track your outreach to them so you can keep track of what you're doing, who you've talked to, who you need to reach back out to. And we're going to give you all kinds of information to have those conversations. And it's all in this really cool place that we're about to tell you about called Rally. We are using this tool called Rally and it's our troublemaker tracker. So again, this is the interactive part. If you are on your phone right now, swipe up to minimize us and get ready to go online. And what we want you to do is to go to rwbvotes.com or text TROUBLE to 59868, or you can use that QR code there that's on the screen to get you, get you started. And then you need to scroll down and select your state. If you are not in Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, or North Carolina, you're going to see an option that says other state. So there's a couple of things you can do. If you are not in one of those four states where we have staff, um, you can't, hey, if you have friends, if you're in Illinois and you got a bunch of friends in Ohio, go ahead and pick Ohio. We want you to message your friends. The other thing you can do um, is hit other state and we need help. We are trying to have women in these four target states having thousands of conversations, thousands of women having these conversations. So we are looking for people to become troublemaker coaches. We will assign you about 10 volunteers that you will reach out to weekly. You're going to make a new best friend in a swing state and really just help people through this process. You will also have help doing this. So if you are interested and you are not in one of those four states or you don't have a lot of friends in those states, please, please sign up in the other state and we are going to get you all hooked in as a troublemaker coach. Okay, so now what we need you to do is to log in either with uh, Gmail where you get a magic link or use email and get a confirmation code. And just know that there's no password required ever, which is so great. So after you've done that, you want to enter your name. Um, so what do you want to be called? Your first name or a nickname um, is fine here. And next you're going to set up your account. So this is, you know, not real hard to do. Uh, no instructions are needed. You do this kind of thing all the time. You know, where do you live? You know, that kind of thing in your first name and your last name. And let us know how we can stay in contact with you. So, you know, is email, you know, put your email there and your phone. Uh, so that we are able to contact you. Also, there is a study being done on relational organizing. Um, your data will not be shared. If you want to participate, fantastic. If not, you can opt out. This is your opportunity to do that here. That's it. You're all signed up and ready to go to put into your first contact. So you're going to click add a contact. So we're going to do that right now. You don't have a, maybe a big list yet, but that's fine. Just who's your best friend, your significant other. I have adult children. I'm going to put their name in there and you need to put their legal name in. So if you have a friend named Beth, but she's actually Elizabeth legally, make sure you put in the legal name because we're going to use it to match to the voter file. So put in their legal name. And then this is so easy, guys. All you need to do is enter the city and state where that your friend lives. 
and then their age. So if you know their exact age, go ahead and put it in. If you just know their age range, that's fine too. That's it. We are not asking for an email. We are not asking for a phone number because we are not contacting your friends. That defeats the whole point of relational organizing. You need to have those conversations. Okay, that's it. The first contact is in rally. So you guys have good to go. You have started. We are now going to take the next step, which is going to be super helpful to you. And you are going to be able to match your friend, all the contacts you're entering to the voter file. So you're going to click on their name after you've entered them. And you're going to see this little green button that says match to voter file. Here's what's going to happen. They're going to show you all the names of the people that you entered. So if you entered my name, Julie Womack, maybe only one of me pops up because that's not a very common name. If you had entered my maiden name, Julie Smith, um, you would probably have seen about 20 people uh, who popped up in the voter file that matched that. So all you do is you pick your friend from the list that pops up. You are matched. And then this is what you're going to be able to find out. It's going to tell you, did your friend vote in 2018 in the last midterm? Did they vote in the presidential in 2020? It's also going to be able to tell you as we go forward in this election, did they request an absentee ballot? Have they returned it? Have they early voted? All of this is really good information for you to have. If your friend doesn't normally vote, uh, that's a good conversation to start. If they do normally vote, then we need to make sure they know all the way down the ticket who they're voting for. So this can really help guide your conversations. Okay, so this is great. You have matched to the voter file and now you have your list. This is your dashboard and you can use this to maintain um, your outreach. So I know who I talked to, who do who I haven't talked to, who do I need to reach back out to? So this is just your great list to be able to do that. We make it really easy to start your conversations. So what you wanna do is click on your friend's name and you'll see a list of actions that you can take. We're giving you suggestions of ways that you can reach out. And here are some of the amazing resources that we have to send to your friends. You can send them an entire guide to voting in their state. What are the issues? What's at stake? Um, your friends want to be informed voters. So give them this guide and help them out and you will be the cool friend. And you can also send them the ballot lookup tool. They can see their whole ballot down to the local level and where candidates stand on important issues like re reproductive rights, gun violence prevention, and public education. What we want you guys to do is I want you to remember your friends want to be informed voters, right? You want to reach out. You want to make sure that they know how to, how to vote for all the way down ballot. So all these tools that are in Rally are such great conversation starters. Send them that voting guide. Send them that ballot lookup. And then you reach back out and you say to them, hey, what do you think? Do you have any questions? Do you have a plan to vote? Um, and then you can be that cool friend who knows about voting and is there to answer their questions. So we really make it very, very easy in here. And I also know if you really sit down and start thinking through your list of people, uh, you will be able to get a big list. I was I started with 10 people in there and I um, am quickly, quickly <laughs> up to like 30, 35 of you know, my neighbors, my friends, my social circles. So anyways, we want everybody in there. We, we know that we can make a huge difference if we all do this together and reach out to our friends and have these conversations. Um, so anyways, I uh, hope everybody will get in there. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. We will drop some information in the chat. I know my team is in there dropping all the links. You can also reach out to us at volunteer at redwine.blue. If you have questions about this, we would love to get in contact with you. Um, so I am really excited. We're going to throw this back to Katie. And uh, I am thrilled to introduce two of my regional organizers with Red, Wine, and Blue, Valerie Torres and Amanda, ooh, I just dropped my sheet, Amanda Polly, who are going to be, they've had lots of conversations. They're talking to lots of people. So they're very experienced at these conversations. So I'm really happy and thrilled that they're joining us tonight. What we're going to be doing tonight um, we have in the past, for those of you who have been here before, we've had this part of the training where we talk about how to have some of these card conversations and we give um, suggested talking points and strategies. We have all of that on our website. Tonight, we're going to talk about the very practical application. Like, you guys, we got less than 30 days to list the election. We got to be talking about real life scenarios and Valerie and Amanda are out there every day having these conversations. They are here to help us. Now, first of all, what I want to say is when you go into thinking about having these conversations, and by the way, that presentation that we usually show at this portion of the training, if you go to redwine.blue and look up under troublemaker resources, it's all there for you anytime. Going into these conversations, it's so important to remember that you are in the majority. 
When it comes to reproductive rights, for example, at least 62% of voters agree and support legal abortion. When it comes to these total bans, total bans that we're seeing in, I think it's 13 or four states we're up to at this point, 6% of Americans support these total abortion bans. Okay, and these sources I'm using are such places as the Wall Street Journal. These are mainstream sources to know and be confident that you are in the majority. 90% support legal birth control, even though we have politicians right now, these extremist politicians pushing total abortion bans that would even impact uh, birth control. Um, and then we have over 70% of voters saying that abortion will be a top issue for them in 2022. So people actually do want to have these conversations. Um, when it comes to gun violence, 66% of voters think gun laws should be more strict. 80% favor background checks. Um, when it comes to LGBTQ plus issues, 71% support marriage equality. Needs to be even higher, but we are at an all time high. And 64% strongly believe that transgender people should be protected from discrimination. 60% um, of Americans oppose banning LGBTQ plus lessons in school. 65% say transgender people should be accepted by society. These are not, you know, just 51% type of numbers. When it comes to education, all that book banning you're seeing, 87% do not support it. So you're, many of you are asking, then why the disconnect? If we're in the majority, if there's so much support for our views, why are politicians pushing it? Well, they're doing it to manipulate voters into maintaining their own power. There are politicians and outside groups who want to scare women, who want to scare politicians, who, excuse me, who want to scare parents, for example, on these education issues and, and create political issues so that they can gain and maintain power. If it were just up to the grassroots, if it were just up to you and me and parents out there, they would not be successful in doing this. So it is up to us to recognize that they are trying to manipulate us, that they are not in the majority, even though they're very, very loud and own our power by having these conversations. So go into these conversations with confidence. You are the majority. As you do that then, we wanna enter these conversations with a curious mind. Knowing that you're in the majority, that doesn't mean entering the conversation by saying, I'm right and you're wrong. In fact, that would probably be the worst way to start a conversation. <laughs> Instead, ask questions. Ask them if they're thinking about the election. Have they noticed that it's just a few weeks away? Ask them things like, what is the most important issue? Are there any issues in particular that you've been thinking about? Just open the conversation by asking questions. Share your story, but let them talk and speak from a place of, um, of how you would talk to, talk to, these are your friends. So don't go into political mode or policy wonk talk. All of a sudden, you're still talking to your friends. And like Abby was saying, you know, she was, she's been nervous to go out there and speak about issues because she doesn't know every single little thing. The most important thing your friends want to hear from you is the same thing you're asking them. What do you care about? What are issues that you care about and why? So once you've done that, there's something really important that you're looking for when you ask these questions. You're asking questions so that you can find a point of common ground. And this is true whether it's somebody that like really agrees with you because you know what you wanna do if they really agree with you? You wanna pump them up to get as involved as you are because we need them reaching out to their friends too. But if it's somebody who's just like not that political, maybe they vote in midterms, maybe they don't, you'd be surprised how many people don't. You're looking at, or if it's someone who, you know that like you think that you could get them on, on their side, but they just have some cross pressuring going on from other places. You're looking for that point of common ground. That thing to say, yes, yes, me too. Find that shared value so that you could say me too. That's why I'm so concerned about what's happening with reproductive rights in our country. I can't believe how extreme things have gotten as a mom, you know, and then you go into your story. So with that, Amanda, who is organizing for us in Pennsylvania. And Amanda, tell us about the area where you live, the kinds of conversations you've been having even within your own family. Okay, so I am from Damon's Ferry, Pennsylvania, which is in Pike County. Um, we are a very rural area. I'm on the top of the Pocono Mountains. Um, we're actually outnumbered here two to one. And that number has, that's really low and exciting for us. So I knew um, 
to win this, I was going to have to step out of my comfort zone. And there was no way that, that I couldn't, could avoid having conversations or avoid being the person that was not political anymore. I had to be the go-to person. And, um, the first time I took a call with RWB and Jess, I was like, I'm going to try this out on my conservative husband. <laughs> and um, some things like right away, I said, I can't believe all these old white men making decisions about money. I should have no say in what goes on in my body. And my husband's nothing. And I said, what? what why aren't you so angry about this? Why aren't you, we have daughters. What are you, how come you're not raging? And he was like, you just told me old white men shouldn't have a say. So right away, I had to dial back in the way that I talk to people because I think I do say those things um, more often than I should. Um, and I think another um, thing too is we have a, a gay daughter who is planning her wedding for March of 2023. And all of this, I get emotional sometimes talking about it, but all of this should be the most joyful time of her life. And the first time I'm going to be a mother of a bride. And we are terrified that every plan we have made come November 9th, we'll be different and we'll move. And I said to him, like, I just can't imagine having, saying that you love her and moving against her rights. And we were able to find that common ground with each other, but we are a small town and like, I have to have, conver we have, we will win this election with conversations. And I have had conversations at soccer practice with moms I've been sitting next to for 10 years and we have never discussed politics. And it might start like, um, hey, did you see that crazy school board meeting? What is going on? Um, and we find a, a connection, a common ground, and we share our stories. And whether we can agree or not, um, we are both being heard and in this divide this country is in to know like soccer for me now is much more enjoyable um, because I know they don't want my daughter to not have her rights to be married. They're scared. They're scared like we are, but for different reasons. That's what I've learned the most. Thanks, Amanda. And I, you know, it is so, there is such a, a gender gap right now, you know, Women are more keyed into this attack on reproductive rights, um, but your willingness to talk to your husband and model that for others and the men who love us and the men we do love in our lives is an important part of this work. And Amanda, I know that your husband came around on um, you know, his support for your daughter, for reproductive rights, and it is because I know that you shifted to listening and finding that shared experience with him that of course you know, we have with our partners. So, Thank you for doing that and modeling that for others. Um, Valerie, talk to us some about the conversations you have been having in North Carolina. Yeah, well, hi, Katie. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Um, so some of the conversations, I am a Latina woman. I'm from Puerto Rico. Um, so I surround myself with a lot of Hispanic people and I was raised Catholic. Um, somewhat conservative and that, you know, a lot of us are raised that way. So having these conversations is difficult sometimes, um, you know, and I used to go into attack mode kind of when I was speaking about, you know, abortion rights and these bans that are happening. Um, and I learned with red, wine and blue, um, you know, I had to kind of step back a little bit, listen, you know, and uh, find the common ground. So instead of attacking or repeating what they are saying, um, they're saying something like, you know, well, these abortion bans are just, you know, helping with the killing of babies. I don't even repeat that. I just say, no, um, you know, we need to talk about 
how we're not going to have as many healthcare options, how um, we might not be able to um, follow our doctor's recommendations, and how we won't be able to control our bodies if we if this goes on. Um, so instead of repeating what they are saying, I'm trying to find what we both care about and go into conversations like that because it's the best way for them to actually listen. Because once you go into attack mode, which that's what I was, you know, doing before, um, you know, there's, there's not going to be a conversation. They're going to shut off and it's just going to turn into a screaming match. So um, I think listening, staying calm, not repeating the misinformation and, you know, getting to that common ground and talking about what we all care about is the best way for them to open up and kind of see your point of view and get your point across. Thank you, Valerie. And I think, you know, the thing we have to remember is that a lot of people, those conversations that Valerie's having, many of those people, no one else has bothered to talk to them about politics before because, you know, they consider themselves not that political. That's not something we're going to talk about. So if somebody approaches that conversation with empathy, with openness, and instead of a knee-jerk reaction because of something they've heard because of a religious or family background, um, instead she finds that common ground, she shares that religious and family background and can refocus that conversation. That's so important, something we talk about all the time. You don't want to repeat the disinformation. It just reinforces it. It's just a salacious view out there. And then we can get upset and go, can you believe they said that? And all we're doing is repeating it out there instead of replacing it with um, personal stories and what is the truth and our shared values. So um, thank you guys both for being on here. I do, I'm so excited about what you're doing out there. And I love hearing the stories every day about conversation by conversation and how it emanates outward. It's not just the single conversation because it's then others finding the confidence and the bravery to go have those conversations too. I want to bring Piper and Abby back on because I want to hear about their list. I'm just so curious to hear if there are family members who this conversation has you thinking about, um, what you heard from Amanda or Valerie or anything you've heard tonight, if it makes you think about, huh, there are certain people I'm going to think about having the conversation with. And I also want to remind people, it's not just the hard conversation people you need to be talking with. It's every person. We want you putting every person in your network into rally and making sure that they have the resources to vote all the way down the ballot. So I just would love to hear from you all, like, you know, who are the friends that you're claiming, you know, in the swing states? Um, how, how are you thinking about um, your outreach? that can be so powerful. This is the most powerful thing you can do is talking to the people we know. What are you thinking about? I want to thank Valerie and Amanda because I thought that was like one of the most useful things, conversation talks I've ever heard because there are, are people in my life too that I don't, I didn't know how to just start. And so what you guys are talking about, about listening, asking questions, don't get mad, try and find the shared value and then be like, yeah, yeah. I, I think I can do that. And I was writing down, like, I don't have anybody in Michigan. Anybody in Michigan wants to be my friend. Um, I don't have anybody in Michigan. So now I want to go look through my address book to see if I have a Michigan version. But here's my, here's my question. I, so I went to my uh, yoga center and to do yoga class and they had voter registration things on the counter. And I was like, oh my gosh, I said to the lady who said, oh, this is so great. Oh, oh wow. Oh, yeah, I have paper. I love paper. And she was like, oh yeah, I have to do that. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, uh-huh. And then I didn't know what to say. And then when I left yoga, um, I took the photo thing and I like put it next to her computer on the desk. But I was like, what's the nice, um, you know, there are people that, that we love that we have the conversation with. There's also like just people in our lives, you know, people you work with, people at your gym or your yoga like how, how do you just like what's the gentle polite but like pushy but polite way to be like did you register yet the same thing is that is this advice that we got from um amanda and mallory it's okay. simply saying like hey did you realize that the election is just like next month like it's in early november or even better something that's going on locally that you think that they may have noticed so for example i think amanda mentioned in a lot of our communities, their school board meetings have gotten a little crazy these days. It's a lot easier to start a conversation about that than it is about the 
did you notice what's up with the U.S. Senate race? You know what I mean? Like hyper local. If you hear a news story about, you know, is there a woman who's been who was denied medication or couldn't get access to care because of what's happened in the state? You know, in 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 Pennsylvania, for example, in Pennsylvania. Um, knowing kind of the landscape, knowing how important, like everyone's talking about the Senate race and the governor's race and the really important, but Pennsylvania, we have to flip that state legislature to be a pro reproductive mm -hmm. rights majority and just sort of, you know, Hey, have you, have you, been, have you heard about what's been going on in our legislature and like what they want to do? Um, so I think the more local you can go, the more okay. just a, a, a story out there in the news, you know, to sort of ask about. And then I think in terms of the whole, like why vote thing, I think that one of my favorite, Mallory McMorrow, the, the yes. state senator we left from Michigan, her line is, you know, if you don't vote, somebody else is going to vote for you. And I don't know about you, but I don't like that. I don't like that for me, you know, and just so sort of like, that's a common value, right? You know, just so those are those are some potential ways in. Um, but I think that you'll find that people also like you'll feel helpful if people are like, you know what, I have been meaning to do that. There are a lot of people out there who are like, I refuse on principle. It's like they haven't gotten to it. And you can be a helper. People like helpers. Mr. Roger just told us that. It's true. <laughs> Thanks. That's that's helpful. Thanks. On that note, I feel like I um in not even I'm not talking about strangers. I think even people I know. So I'm from right outside Philly. I'm from Wayne, Pennsylvania. So yeah. that's Chester County. And I'm in an area that's like super swingy. I, I don't know exactly like what the county where we landed because I, I don't live there anymore. But I mean, there were, there are, were or not now, but there were like Trump rallies. Like I went to sc high school in Berwyn. There was like the, like, like really intense um, on both sides. And it felt, it, it, it feels like a very like hot area where I, I don't, I, my mom was going to come on here. I didn't see her. Anyway, my mom <laughs> has so many friends. And I, I think this is also like the area where like, we didn't like politics was like, not, it's like, per, it was personal. Like you didn't, you didn't like talk about it. And uh, it like, now it's like, it's personal. Yeah. This mm. it, like politics is so it is about us and we need, if you are, I'm in the, and listen, I think it's, it, I think it's a little bit different for a, a little bit of an older generation of like, but wait, like if we're, if you're my best friend, we need to be talking about all of this because yeah. it is so personal. And so I'm thinking about a lot of those women um, from home. And so my mom and my mom's friends and my aunts and my stepmom, and I, I know a lot of them already will vote. Demo uh, for Democrats, but like down the ballot. But I'm also assuming a lot in terms of like, I know that they feel this way. I don't know if everyone will vote in the midterms. I don't know if they know um, the down everyone. I don't know if they know about anything about state legislature, anything. And so I think it's like, let me just have the conversation and make sure. And also, I also tend to be a little bit nervous. <laughs> just say that I'm nervous about everything, but I tend to be a little nervous of even saying like, are you registered? I'll come about it. Like, do you know that sometimes like you should just double check your registration if you're registered? Like I just do it in this like way around that lets them be like, oh, like maybe like she's starting the conversation and if they're not registered, maybe they're like, you know what I should, but just, um, that's one thing that I thought about is sort of like, you know, because it is a thing, like just double check your registration and also like approaching it. Like I'm voting in the midterms. I need to be like, I need to, I've got found a couple people in my community that can inform me like Alana, who I did broad city with has these cheat sheets on the midterms. And so like Alana has the cheat sheets on some swing States and I have some friends I'm in Los Angeles right now. I have friends who have cheat sheets that help me know more about my down ballot uh candidates and i don't think that the majority of my friends i, I have a best friend on here Be uh bevers you know i think you know all of it but a lot of my friends from home i don't know if they do necessarily they all have three kids they're all very busy women running lives and you know i i don't i think that like we assume those things too even with our friends that we know that they have similar 
political views, if that's what, if that's makes sense. A hundred percent. And I think that the whole- <laughs> Also, I think it's like, okay. Sorry. I'm going to say, I think it's go. okay to stumble through shit like yes. I'm doing with your friends. Yes, it there is. We go. We're all just finding our way together. <laughs> but I love to the trick of just like, and you know, double check. And also like, how about, you know, I just double checked my voter registration. Mm-hmm. I'm so mm-hmm. relieved. I do. I yes. just did that. And same thing with this cheat sheet. And by the way, if you have, if you need a cheat sheet for Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, or North Carolina, we got them. Super easy to use. All the information you need about the race that's going all the way down the ballot. Plain language. On the website. Go to the website. Go to okay. guides. That's awesome. That's awesome. Actually, they're right there on the homepage for those four states. They are all the information I ever dreamed of being available on, in these states and just well researched, but just from the perspective of just like, tell me what I need to know and make it plain, not yes. all the weeds. And what's at stake in these elections too? Why does this actually matter? And we also have a tool you can share where people, you can send it to folks in, um, anywhere and they can put in their address and research their entire ballot. Who's running all the way down to the school board level. So awesome. it's just a huge you know, tool to have and you just being a resource. So again, um, I just checked my voter registration here. You know what? I just checked out this really cool guide to the Pennsylvania <laughs> midterms. I mean, I, would you be interested in that? I mean, I texted you, you know? Yeah, exactly. The and then meanwhile, check, check them off in rally. You did your job. You took care of it. And collectively, uh, that kind of outreach is incredibly powerful because it's coming from you to people you know. I love this conversation, you guys. We are at the end of our hour. I feel like this could go on. I, I, I want to be like, okay, now what about her? What about him? How are we going to get to them? How are we going to get to her? But I think that just having these like practical application conversation, it's, it's something we do at our event sometimes. It's like, think about, okay, how am I going to have this conversation? So you guys out there, your list, make your list. Don't, you're not done. Okay, we're going to hop off of this Zoom call, but take the energy that you have gotten here tonight to make your list, to think about how can I start that conversation? Think about that point of connection of saying that I just checked my registration. I just checked out this really cool voting guide. I just found this, this resource where I could re- I could just put in my address and there's my whole ballot. Don't you think that would be useful to you? And if you're in one of our states, guess what? We've got right in there, checks and X marks as marks by the people who support and don't support things like reproductive rights and gun safety. So we've done the research for you. You're gonna look amazing and so smart and brilliant. Thank you guys for using your platforms. Thank you guys for showing up, Piper, you're right. It's showing up matters so much and modeling that for so many others. Um, And thank you for your willingness to think through this with us and think about how to have these conversations. Like you guys, they're just like us. They're on TV, but they're still trying to figure out how to have these conversations too, right? Okay, like they they know that by now, but but we're like, (laughs) (laughs) they're like, yes, they are exactly. Trying to figure it's so it out. inspiring and so helpful. It's just so fun to see this many women talking about things and trying to like, you know, make things better in their community. It's, it's all I want. Yeah. It really is. I feel, I mean, I like, thank you guys for doing this and talking us through it and thank everybody on here because I'm, yeah. I'm very inspired and I feel like this is, I, I mean, I feel like I've been doing so much of this stuff. And this is the, maybe it feels like a, a community in here and a resource and something I can fully take to my own little communities. And that's really a powerful thing. Yeah, thank you. You just add an Abby Jacobson with the closing remarks for the night, ladies. <laughs> I didn't mean to <laughs> do that. It. Go Abby. Go Abby. Thank you everyone for being with us tonight. We're going to be having these on a weekly basis from now until the election. And if you live in our states, there are in-person events every single day. Go to redwine.blue, check out the events page. There's something near you, I promise, probably in the next few days in person, or you can catch up with us virtually. But be in this community. Let us have your back, okay? You support other people. We'll support you. Let's be open and honest about everything we're feeling. It's exhausting. It's stressful. But if we support each other, we can get through this together. So thank you everyone for being here tonight. And thank you, Abby and Piper too. You guys have a great night. Bye.